Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about skin transplant. The skin integrity is very important to provide the protective barrier from infection and water loss. When the skin is damaged by a burn or scald, the protection is lost. Skin transplant is necessary when the cells needed to repair the skin have been lost or damaged and new tissues are needed. When skin is burned or wound extensively, the surgical procedure can protect the patient's skin and overall health. Skin graft can prevent bacterial or viral infections, regulate body temperature, and protect the body from food loss. In this video, we will talk about everything related to skin transplantation, such as the reasons for resorting to it, how to process it, and perform it. So our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding skin transplant. Today we have Dr. Kim, who is a leading doctor at Hanya University Hospital. He is going to discuss with us everything about skin transplant from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, Ume. Before you start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. For skin graft, are there people who are not good candidates, people who cannot do it? In our body, the skin is the most likely to reject anything foreign. Because if we grafted from someone else, the rejection would be severe. There are ways to reduce rejection by using tissues such as cadaveric skin, which is helpful when there is urgency and the patient has lost most of the skin, perhaps some approaching 99% and there's no skin to graft available. The downside is that the cadaveric skin does not stick well, so we use this in rare cases. So still talking about skin graft, uh, Dr. Kim, who can be a donor for skin? We use the term autologous when we refer to a graft taken from another area of the patient's own body. In such cases, there is no risk of rejection. Also, if we have a set of twins and one has suffered burns, the sibling can donate without rejection risk as they are similar people. In some rare cases, mothers ask if they can donate to the sons in need. But it is not a good fit since genetically a mother and son are quite different. Um, for skin graft, are there any risks or dangers as well? Skin grafting is a relatively easy surgery. But in cases where there is lack of adhesion of the graft to the rest of the flesh, we are faced with a difficult situation whereby we must perform skin graft surgery again. Lack of adhesion is the biggest risk. Okay. Uh, so after doing skin graft, what kind of... Um, what can be done to take care of the skin? Instead of leaving the affected area in limbo, some applied pressure can help the adhesion process. We can achieve this by dressing the affected area to apply some pressure. If the affected area is large, we can use negative pressure wound therapy in order to expedite the adhesion process. So this, this question is related to skin cancer. For people who do skin grafts for skin cancer cases? For cases where the cancer affected area is not too deep, we can use skin graft technique. But in cases where the wound is deep and cavernous, we must use the flap technique as the skin grafts do not stick well to a bone structure. Okay, so going back to skin flap, what is exactly the difference between skin flap and skin graft? I know you talked about it before. Mm. The difference between flap and graft lies in the flap's inclusion of its own capillary system for blood flow. Flap is thicker and graft is thin layers of skin cells without its own capillary system. To understand easily, surgeries that use a chunk of tissue from the belly for other areas in the body is flap surgery. Surgeries that use thin shavings or layers of the thigh to use in other areas is graft surgery. Okay, so depending on the case, for example, for skin cancer and just a normal skin graft, the mm. way it's performed is different, right? It is the same, actually. 
While there are not many types of skin graft techniques, for the tissue there, there are two kinds. One is very thin, and another is not that thin. Our skin layers are arranged at epidermis and dermis. Simply utilizing the epidermis in thin layers is called split thickness skin graft. Taking both the epidermis and dermis is called the full thickness skin grafting. STSG and FTSG are often used as their acronyms. Using these two techniques, we can treat skin cancer wounds effectively. Can you do both in the same uh, surgery? It is possible. There are cases where we can do STSG in one area and FTSG in another. But it is not using one technique on top of another in the same affected area. Thank you. Today we learned many things about skin transplant, and the doctor explained in details everything related to skin transplant to treat extensive wounds and burns, skin cancer, and reconstruct body parts damaged by cosmetic surgeries. Thank you for joining us once again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and we will respond to you as soon as possible.